a moonless night. Somewhere on the Baltic frontier, drones pick up the orange flash of enemy artillery, too late for the defenders to scramble. But before the next salvo lands, eight shadows burst from a darkened forest at 60 miles per hour. Their tires barely whisper, their cannons glow red, and their digital sights lock on. Within seconds, the guns fall silent. One question hangs in the air. How did an entire artillery battery lose to a handful of wheeled gun trucks? Tonight on Combat Tech, we dive into a family of machines that rewrites every rule of armored warfare. Light enough to fly anywhere on the planet, heavy enough to shrug off roadside bombs, networked enough to fight wars that haven't even started yet. The Striker series is the US Army's answer to a world where threats morph by the hour. 24 distinct variants, 10 classic flat bottoms, 7 double V hulls, and 7 of the new DVH-A1s slice one 19-ton chassis into a Swiss army knife of destruction. Infantry taxi, tank hunter, flying command post, the list keeps growing. And beginning this year, the first DVH-A1 infantry carriers roll out with 30mm cannons, javelin-armed remote turrets, and software so smart it predicts the next ambush before the first shot is fired. Are we witnessing the birth of a new era where speed, sensors, and software beat raw tonnage every single time? Buckle up. For the next 20 minutes, we'll unleash the entire striker bloodline, one deadly sibling at a time. Rewind to the late 1990s. U.S. commanders look at two extremes, 70-ton Abrams that take weeks to ship and light Humvees that die under machine gun fire. What they need is a Goldilocks tank, fast, deployable, lethal. Enter General Dynamics Land Systems, Sterling Heights, Michigan. Their answer, an 8x8 armored carrier named after Medal of Honor. Recipient Specialist Robert F. Stryker and PFC Stuart S. Stryker. The new brigade concept, Stryker Brigade Combat Teams, promises boots on the ground anywhere in 96 hours. Weighing just under 19 tons, a Stryker fits into a C-130 in a pinch. Two can slide into a C-17, and a whole company can roar out of a C-5. Unlike track vehicles that rattle themselves apart on asphalt, the Stryker's eight giant Michelin XZL tires spin effortlessly across 330 miles on one tank of JP-8, topping 62 miles per hour on highway and 50 miles per hour off-road. But speed is useless if crews die on arrival. By 2005, the roadside bomb is king, so engineers graft a double V hull, DVH underbelly, an angled steel wedge that deflects blast waves sideways, boosting crew survival by up to 250%. The latest DVH A1 adds a more powerful 450 horsepower Caterpillar, C9 engine, beefier axles, and a digital nervous system capable of remote troubleshooting from half a world away. Imagine cramming an entire nine soldier rifle squad, their rucks, drones, and an exoskeleton test kit into a space the size of a city delivery van, then hurling it down a dirt road at highway speed while 14.5 millimeter rounds ricochet like hail. That's the Stryker ICV. Early models relied on an M250 caliber or MK19 grenade launcher in a remote weapon station. Effective, but nothing a peer adversary would fear. Enter the ICV DVH, a 130 millimeters. Contracted to Oshkosh Defense, this variant replaces the old Protector RWS with a lethality kit straight from a sci-fi script. XM-813, Bushmaster 230mm chain gun, 200 rounds per minute, airburst capable, accurate out to 3,000 meters. Crows J, a common remote operated weapon station that bolts a shoulder launch javelin onto the roof, giving a wheeled troop carrier the punch to kill main battle tanks at 2.5 kilometers. Third gen FLIR, spot infantry hiding behind foliage in thermal black and white at midnight. Fielding starts fiscal year 2025, one brigade at a time. 87 Crows Crows J turrets per SBCT. For the first time since World War II, an American rifle squad rides to battle in a vehicle that outranges most Russian BMPs while out accelerating them by 20 miles per hour. Game changer? You tell me. Every ambush begins with knowledge. The Striker Reconnaissance Vehicle turns knowledge into an art form. Perched on a telescoping mast, the long-range advanced scout surveillance system zooms enemy trenches in HD at 10 kilometers. LiDAR plots range, while SIGINT antennas sniff out cell phones humming beyond the ridgeline. Inside, four scouts watch a 360-degree mosaic stitched by LRAS-3, Black Hornet nanodrones, and radar feeds piped directly from overhead Gray Eagle UAVs. The punchline, data moves at the speed of laser light along the command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, C4 ISR backbone. A sniper team seven clicks away can pull the same picture onto a tablet, call precision fires, and melt back into the shadows before their target.
target even knows it's being watched. If the 20th century was about massing firepower, the Striker Recon is about massing information. Armies still worship the main battle tank. The Striker anti-tank guided missile variant worships the kill button. Two elevated tow 2B launchers hide inside an armored shroud until the crew pops them up, fires, and folds them down. One volley of top attack missiles punches 900 millimeters of RHA steel, enough to slice through a T-90M's turret like butter. But 2025 rewrites the playbook. The Crow's J station, already proven on ICV-30s, will sit atop the next ATGM upgrade, doubling magazine depth with reload under armor pods. Imagine cruising a wheat field at 55 miles per hour, cannon rounds zipping overhead, when a synthetic aperture radar cue flashes T-14 detected at 2,300 meters. The driver angles 15 degrees, the gunner taps fire, Javelin's tandem heat warhead leaps skyward and slams straight down the Armada's roof plate. No smoke, no recoil, no warning. The invisible killer. Choking clouds of chlorine at Ypres, sarin rockets in Syria. The specter of chemical warfare refuses to die. The nuclear, biological, chemical, and radiological vehicle turns panic into procedure. On its deck spins the JVNQ a mass spectrometer-equipped snorkel that literally tastes the air. Laser scintillation sensors sniff for aerosolized anthrax. An integrated ANVDR-2 Geiger counter tracks neutron flux every half second. When reading spike, the crew floods the cabin with overpressurized filtered air, then launches Fox Accor remote samplers. Within minutes, lab quality analysis flows across the SBCT network, mapping contamination in 3D. The result, commanders reroute convoys, medics prep antidotes, artillery smokescreen gaps, all before the first symptoms hit. Modern combat medicine lives and dies by the golden hour. Stryker's medical evacuation vehicle turns that hour into a 15-minute sprint. The floor lowers hydraulically to load two litter casualties, while wall-mounted robots auto-stabilize IV drips, even on a 20-degree tilt. A shock-attenuating suspension keeps spinal injuries motionless at top speed. Thanks to encrypted medical telemetry, forward surgeons watch real-time vitals from miles away prepping the OR before the patient even arrives. When seconds equal lives, the MEV's ability to take highway speeds across the worst terrain on Earth outshines any helicopter grounded by dust or man pads. If Napoleon had had one of these, Waterloo ends differently. Gigabit mesh radios, SATCOM dishes, and a collapsible tropo scatter antenna fuse into a bouncing node of mission command. Inside the commander's vehicle, staffers project drone feeds onto touchscreens drag brigade icons like chess pieces, and fire off digital fragmentary orders that appear on every soldier's wrist display in seconds. A backup generator kicks in if the engine dies, while an onboard AI hunts for cyber intrusions 20 million times per second. In a war where the first casualty is communication, the CV turns chaos into calculus. Artillery wins wars is an old cliche. The Stryker fire support vehicle gives that saying, broadband. Equipped with the Stryker suite, its laser rangefinder and target designator mark enemy armor for GPS-guided Excalibur rounds fired from howitzers 20 miles away. The FY 2025 upgrade integrates a digital fire direction center, FDC algorithms, crunch weather topography, and propellant temperature in under three seconds. Fire mission data streams instantly to every Paladin, High Mars, or Thunderbolt UAV loitering overhead. Meanwhile, the mortar carrier variant hides a 120mm M121 tube under a sliding roof. The crew drops a GPS-guided M934A1 round, presses fire, and the shell arcs 7,200 meters to land within two meters of map pin, even in zero visibility fog. The entire process, from spotter laser to boom, can clock under 90 seconds. Enemies used to feel safe behind a ridge. Not anymore. Wars aren't won on clean highways. Mud, rubble, and dragon teeth tank traps form a gauntlet. The engineer's squad vehicle slaps a dozer blade up front, mounts a Miklik rocket-propelled line charge on the roof, and totes eight sappers plus demolition drones inside. One trigger pull hurls 1,750 pounds of C4 across 100 meters carving a six meter wide path through a minefield in seconds. Follow on troops pour through before the dust settles and the company assault timeline shrinks from hours to minutes. Bridges collapsed, engineers unfold modular ramps, urban fight blocked by burning cars, blade down, obstacle gone. Agility isn't just movement, it's momentum. Blast protection used to mean welding on more steel and praying. 
The DVHA1 flips that equation with geometry and brains. Its sharply angled belly deflects 80% of IED energy, while a suspended energy attenuating seat system decouples humans from shockwaves. Strut tower reinforcements, higher capacity wheel hubs, and packs run flat tires let the heavier hull keep its 60 mile per hour sprint. But the real magic rides in cyberspace. Open architecture network. Plug and play mission modules snap in like USB drives, future proofing the fleet. Predix based predictive maintenance. Sensors monitor gearbox vibration, brake temperature, even tire wear. The algorithm alerts mechanics before a breakdown, slashing non mission capable rates by 35%. AFV APS ready rails, hard points engineered to bolt on active protection systems like Trophy MV or Iron Fist. Radar spots an incoming RPG, micro munitions blast it midair. At fiscal year 2025, funding wraps 10 DVHA, one brigades by decade's end. Each hull is a blank canvas for lasers, loitering drone racks, or EMP cannons still in prototype labs. The chassis you see today could stalk battlefields in 2045 silent and electric, guided by AI. Steel alone wins nothing without trained crews. The Pentagon pours millions into training aids, devices, simulators, and simulations, TADSS, for striker brigades. Drivers slip into VR cockpits where Afghan switchbacks morph into Arctic ice roads at the flip of a switch. Gunners practice shooting pop-up BMPs in mixed reality domes. Because every striker hull pumps sensor fees to the cloud, trainers replay real-world missions like NFL coaches diagramming missteps in 3D. The result? Platoons hit combat deployments having fought the same city blocks 20 times in simulation. When the first actual bullet cracks, muscle memory answers before fear kicks in. None of this exists without American industry. General Dynamics in Michigan bends 400 steel plates per day into armored modules. The DVHA one's integrated powertrain built at Caterpillar Defense, Mossville, Illinois. Oshkosh Defense in Wisconsin spins up automated well cells for the 30 millimeter turrets. Each SBCT order sustains 7,000 direct jobs and funnels $1.6 billion into the Rust Belt. Proof that defense tech doesn't just fight wars, it forges economies. Picture a striker with no driver. The robotic combat vehicle medium testbed already bolts an autonomy kit under the same DVHA one hull. LiDAR, neural nets, and V2 XCOMs let convoys snake through fog without human eyes. Now swap the 30 millimeter chain gun for a 50 kilowatt indirect fire protection laser. During a 2024 trial, a prototype striker shot down class three drones at 1.5 kilometers. The beam visibly slicing carbon fiber wings in midair. Engineers say scaling to 100 kilowatts is a matter of cooling loops, not physics. Finally, hybrid diesel electric power plants whisper in R&D labs, promising 30% fuel savings and near silent stealth mode for night raids. Add graphene battery armor that doubles as a conductor for electromagnetic armor, and you glimpse the 2035 battlescape, a ghostly column of wheeled phantoms invisible to thermal scopes, zapping drones like mosquitoes, while AI selects routes humans never considered. Zoom out. Warfare splits into three overlapping dimensions, mobility, lethality, information support, Supremacy. Most vehicles master one, maybe two. The Stryker family grabs all three and welds them to a single chassis that can fly across oceans, sprint across deserts, and plug into the kind of data lattice once reserved for fighter jets. Mobility. 19 tons, 8 wheels, C-17 ready. That means battalions appear on an enemy flank before his satellites can task imagery. Lethality. 30 millimeter airburst cannons, javelin missiles, and top attack tows that erase $100 million tanks with a 200k warhead. Information, recon masts, AI maintenance, mesh networks turn every platoon into its own ISR strike cell. But the real alchemy happens when those axes converge. Picture a 2028 crisis flashpoint. A striker recon vehicle spots hostile armor massing beyond a ridgeline. A single click cues an FDC inside a commander's vehicle. In 40 seconds, mortar carriers lob guided rounds while ATGM variants sweep flanks for survivors. Engineers blast a breach lane, ICV-30s surge through, guns blazing, infantry dismounting under drone overwatch. Meanwhile, NBCRVs scan the breeze for dirty munitions, MEVs stand ready for casualties, and TADs back home harvest every bite to refine tomorrow's playbook. The entire kill chain lives inside one family reunion on wheels. This is not the tank charge of Kursk or the trench grind of Mosul. It's something faster, smarter, adaptive, 
and it forces every adversary to ask a sickening question. How do you stop a unit that learns faster than you can reload? If you think steel juggernauts belong to history, think again. The Stryker family proves that evolution never sleeps. It accelerates. From Arctic tundra to Pacific archipelagos, these eight-wheeled predators are already scripting the next doctrine of war. Want front row seats to that future? Smash subscribe. Hit the bell. Because on Combat Tech, tomorrow's battlefield is only one video away. And trust me, you don't want to be late.